take it away. We're so grateful oh. that you're here. Thank, thank you. you. Um, I, first of all, just want to thank you all for inviting me. This is wonderful. I love doing yoga whenever it is uh, during the day. So it's normally early in the morning that I get to do yoga and we'll do some a little bit later uh, during the meeting. Um, I'm just, I just saw that the recording started and I was trying to figure out what to do with the message, but I figured it out. So, um, anyway, I, I'm excited that the three of you, as well as Amy, have taken over and run with this wonderful group that has been a part of Helping Parents Heal for a very long time. And um, I also am excited to be able to share some ways to be able to heal uh, through yoga because yoga has been one of my most important tools on my healing journey. and. Maybe I could just tell a little bit about my journey. Most people already know about it, but um, I lived in India when I was in middle school, high school, and in college. So I started doing yoga very, very early, and it's been a part of my life for a very long time. I love yoga. I loved it before Morgan transitioned. I love it even more now because I think it's something that really allows us to um, become more calm, but also happier as we move forward and start to heal. And I, I think that there are a lot of tools that we have to be able to move forward and heal, but this is such an easy one, especially guided meditations, which is something that we're going to be doing tonight. All you have to do is close your eyes and sit there. But um, when when I was living in France, um, back in, let's see, in 1988, first of all, Morgan was born. And then um, I kept trying to have more children, had a couple difficult pregnancies, and then I was pregnant with Chelsea, and Chelsea, uh, unfortunately, uh, my placenta was previa, and so I had to be in the hospital uh, for two months on an IV before she was born. And then when she was born, um, my water broke early, and the gynecologist, the obstetrician, didn't want to have me have uh, Chelsea yet. So in the in the interim time that I was waiting to have her, unfortunately, her lungs were crushed. And uh, when she was born, she survived for two days on a ventilator and then transitioned. The importance of Chelsea to this story um, is that she was already over there she was already starting to help me to be able to understand ways to help people heal. I was practicing yoga all this time. I practiced yoga uh, in France and then here in the States as well. And then uh, when Morgan went to China uh, his senior year, he had already gone as a sophomore as well. Um, he told me before he left, as he was packing, that he didn't think that he was going to be coming back from China this time. That made me very, very nervous. And I said to him, you don't even need these credits. Just stay here. You can stay here and be a cheerleader at U of A and we'll see you more and it will be wonderful. And he said, no, mom, I'll be fine. So he left for China and for the fall break he wanted to go to hong kong because my husband had an office there and we were concerned that if he left china and went to hong kong he might not be able to get back into china um, because of the visas and different paperwork and the whole group was going to tibet and they had been studying tibet and it was it was something that all of the students wanted to do anyway so he said, okay, mom, we have two professors going to Tibet. Can I go to Tibet? And I said, sure, because it was um, part of China and, um, and I thought it would be easier for him to be able to get back into Nanjing after that. Um, 
they left uh, 13 students and actually the two professors ended up not going on this trip. Um, they landed in Lhasa at 11,000 feet and then the next morning immediately started uh, going up the mountain to the base camp of Mount Everest, which is 19,000 feet. And unfortunately, because of this, because of the fact that um, they went up in altitude way too quickly, um, all of the kids were very sick. There were a lot of kids that were throwing up in the bus or they were throwing up as the bus would stop. Morgan was helping everyone because he spoke Chinese better than everyone else. He was a senior and he had been there for a year. And so um, he was holding people's heads when they were getting sick. And he'd never been to Tibet before, though. This is the first time for him. So um, he started getting a terrible migraine. They got up to the base camp. And when they got there, um, unfortunately, um, the migraine was so bad that he had to go to bed and he did and they were in a huge yurt and um, all of the kids would see him during the night calling them by the wrong name he was kind of wandering around and the next morning he was foaming at the mouth and they couldn't wake him up and so um one of the kids called his mom who was uh, a professor in washington state and said we can't wake him up. Um, what should we do? And she said, you need to get him onto the bus. You need to get him down in altitude right away. And so they, all 13 of them, picked up my son, who at the time was 280 pounds, six foot six, and put him on the bus. And in the meantime, the director of the program called me and he um, let me know that Morgan was getting evacuated and asked if I wanted his roommate's phone number. And of course I wanted it. So I called Colin immediately and Colin told me, Miss Boisson, it doesn't look good. Um, we actually, at that time, they had taken him back off the bus because he had stopped breathing and they were attempting CPR on him. So I told Colin, please put the phone up to his ear. And I told Morgan that we loved him that we were proud of him and not to be afraid. And I have no idea of why I decided to do that, but it just felt like the right thing to do at the time. And I got an enormous hug from Morgan and I still get those hugs to this day, but it was an incredible hug. And I now know that it was a shared death experience. And the reason that I tell about Chelsea every time that I tell this story is because I found out later um, from several mediums who have told me this, that Chelsea transitioned to be there when Morgan transitioned so that she could grab his hand and guide him to me, to be able to give me that hug. And so I know that everything was pre-planned and for me to be able to feel that hug was something that proved to me in that moment and has continued to prove to me ever since that love lives forever, that our kids are not gone. They are not, um, they're not dead. They are still with us. And immediately when this happened, the first thing that I wanted to do was to find other parents and see if they were experiencing the same thing because I assume that this was something that everyone experienced uh, when their children transition. But I've now understood that that's not always the case. And I was very fortunate in getting that hug. But I do believe that it's because of the fact that I had already been through this once before with Chelsea. And she was helping to make sure that I knew that both of them were there. So. Um, um, that was the start of this journey, and I looked around to try to find other support groups um, that would allow us to talk about our kids, that would allow us to talk about the connection that I was feeling with Chelsea and with Morgan, and not only that, but I, there were some really crazy things that were going on in the house and um, 
just in nature. I, I was having animals come up to me. I was, there were just so many things happening and I wanted to talk to people about this and find out if it was something that everybody was experiencing. But unfortunately, when I would go to the meetings, the support group meetings that existed at the time, uh, they would say, we're, we're not supposed to talk about that kind of thing at this meeting. And so I would be in the parking lot with all these parents around me saying, oh my gosh, I'm having the same thing happening. This is so amazing because yeah, I'm, this happens to me too. But they can't, they couldn't talk about it in these meetings. So I started a Facebook group um, one week later. And then after that, I um, we started by having our first meeting a month and a half after that. And Mark Ireland, who is the co-founder of Helping Parents Heal, whose son also transitioned on a mountain, um, was our first speaker. He spoke about his book that I absolutely loved, which is Soul Shift, Finding Where the Dead Go. And that's a pretty amazing story as well, because the recent that I met Mark was through Suzanne Wilson, who will be a keynote speaker at our conference. She had done a reading for me at my yoga studio, and I think a lot of you have heard about this. It was so incredible and so detailed, and I wasn't even there, that I wanted to have a reading with her, but her husband was sick, and she wasn't doing readings for about two months. And right before I was supposed to speak to Suzanne. Um, Suzanne was at a psychic fair with Jamie Clark, who is also going to be at the conference, and Mark. And um, Suzanne met Mark, heard about his son who had transitioned on the McDowell mountain range, and told him about this mom she was going to be doing a reading for whose son transitioned at the base camp of Mount Everest in Tibet. And when she did, he said, oh gosh, well, I, I'm gonna sign my book. Can you take it to her? And of course, Suzanne did. And I read his book in two nights, maybe less, I'm not sure. It was so validating for me because it was exactly the same thing that I was experiencing. And I know that for all of us, we just want to understand that we're not crazy in the beginning. That's one of the most important things. So when we find somebody who is having those same experiences, it makes you feel so good. It makes you feel like, oh my gosh, all this time I thought maybe having Morgan transition was just too much for me. But um, he is very scientific. He's also read the Bible. He is... Um, the son of a very famous psychic medium, Richard Ireland. So he knows about all of these things. And when we had coffee together and actually became close friends with his wife and my husband and all of the other parents that were here at the time, um, it was such a wonderful thing. And it's funny because we had a huge group of parents who would go out to dinner who all had kids who had transitioned. Many of them have moved away now, but um, we would be the table at Gordon Biersch, which no longer exists, but it was a really fun place to go, uh, that was laughing, that was making noise, that we were talking about our kids and couldn't stop laughing and telling these stories. And other tables would say, what are they celebrating over there? And of course, we were just celebrating our kids. That's all that we were doing was being able to talk about our kids with other pe people who understood. And that's exactly why Helping Parents Heal exists, to be able to talk to like-minded people about our incredible kids. Because unfortunately, a lot of times, it's very difficult to find anyone who wants to hear or talk about your child even if they absolutely love them, even if they are the relative that was the closest to them when they were here in the physical, because it makes them sad. And they also think that it's going to make us sad to talk about our kids. And it's true that we do cry tears, but of joy 
because these people are remembering our kids. They're not tears of sadness. So if everyone understood that, I think that that our society in terms of having the passing of a child would be so much easier. Or on the other hand, I know that all of you experienced a lot of things that sounded very um, trite and also condescending maybe. Like if that happened to me, I would never be able to get out of bed or I would die or, you know, and well, what are you supposed to do? We're not going, to, that's not an option, especially if you have other children or a husband waiting for you at home. So um, I've always told friends and family that the best thing that they can do if they are at a loss for words with any um, parent who has just experienced the passing of a child or anyone who's experienced the passing of a loved one in general is to go up to the person, give them a hug and say no words. And I think that all of us realize that that is probably the best thing that we can hear instead of hearing things that we don't want to hear and knowing that that friend is there for us. And I think it's also important for all of these friends and family to understand that all that we really want is for them to listen. We don't need anyone talking to us or talking at us at that time. So, but I must say, and I say this a lot, and I know that she might have heard this uh, in some of the interviews, my sister told me that she couldn't see me for the first year, really, because it made her too sad because she loved and loves Morgan so much, which is kind of an interesting thing to hear because, of course, I think as a mom or as a dad or as a sibling, we're the ones who love these children more than anyone on earth. But I do understand that it's very hard for all of these people to be able to um, continue showing up for us. So that said, the reason that Helping Parents Heal exists is that it's a safe place for parents and families to heal. We get it, we know, and we love hearing about these kids. And as I say, we get a little rowdy when we're talking about our kids, <laughs> which is really, really fun. So um, I, I just wanted to tell all of you that I feel so grateful for all of you, but I especially feel grateful for our kids who wake me up every morning. They tell me it's time to get out of bed and go and post the tributes. And they're the ones who I feel a lot of days like a marionette and I'm just kind of following whatever they want me to do. And I think that that is a very exciting thing because um, I wouldn't necessarily know what to do to grow an organization like this. And they've really, really helped me as well as all of our volunteer parents and um, siblings and dads, dads group as well. So that's a lot about me and I didn't want it to go on for such a long time. I don't know if there are any questions that anyone has. And if not, we can get started with some gentle yoga. I hope that all of you were able to maybe bring, um, I have a mat and then I also have a bolster. You don't have to have that. We're going to start on the floor and then um, after that, and if you want to, please uh, turn your monitors off. You can turn your cameras off to feel more comfortable. And then after that, I was going to come back here and sit in the chair and do a guided meditation with you. I, I frequently do the guided meditations on the mat, but I think it might be more powerful to do it here. So is that okay with everyone? If there aren't any questions, if you do have any questions, then just let me know. I don't see any in the chat or any hands raised, so we can we can um, go ahead and, and do some gentle yoga. And I'm I'm going to have to stay in my chair, and there might be others too. I'm I'm just um, recovering from knee replacement, so I'll or I'll stand up and do whatever I can to to move along. Um, thank you so much. Yeah. That's
to get up out of their chair. Just stay in your chair if you'd like to. And then maybe follow along with the movements that I'll be doing for our shoulders and our okay. arms. But um, Thank you. in case I'm looking forward to this, I'm going to quickly just turn on the music because I like to have just a little bit of music when I am teaching yoga. Power off. Whoops, I just turned the power off. That was very silly. I guess I left it on and then turned it off. Power on. Bluetooth already opened. And then, and before we get started, I'm just going to also Power on. Bluetooth. Bluetooth Bluetooth already opened. bring the gong, which Bluetooth. was a present from my yogis. And it's got Bluetooth. such a beautiful sound, and I think it's a great way to start practice anyway. But before we do that, I'll go ahead and start the playlist. And um, let's see. And I hope everybody's doing well this evening, that they're not, they don't have bronchitis like I had for a couple of days. I'm feeling so much better now though. And again, we're going to get started. Before I do, I'm going to move my chair. I just realized I don't usually have a chair when I'm doing yoga. No. off if you'd like to or you can leave them on whatever you want to do is perfect i'm going to go ahead and ring the gong Again, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four. Again, inhale, two, three, 
two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four. Again, opening and closing those knees if this is in your practice. One last time, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four. Now allow your breathing to come naturally to its own rhythm. Allow the warmth of your breath to go to any area of your body that is tense or sore and allow the breath to relieve the tension or soreness that is there. Imagine your breath gathering up all of the tension and soreness in your bodies and breathing it out so that you begin to feel peaceful and relaxed. Any distracting thoughts or feelings that you may have, allow them to be sent out with the breath. And as you breathe, allow yourselves to go deeper and deeper into this state of calm, knowing that you are in control at all times. Connect with a personal intention for this practice. This intention could be physical, mental, or spiritual, and it could be for you or for your beautiful children in spirit. Seal that intention with one deep inhale and one deep exhale. Good job. Inhale your knees and arms to center. Exhale as you roll over onto the right side in the fetal position. Remain here for a few breaths. Then using the strength of your arms, come up to a seated position facing the front of the room. Sit up on that bolster if this is in your practice, but you don't have to. This is allowing us to fold forward even more. We're moving into Dandasana. Flex your feet. <clears throat> and again, if you're on a chair, you can do this, but instead of folding all the way forward, just fold down towards your knees. Inhale both arms all the way up. And exhale as you fold forward. Hinge at the hips. Keep your backs flat as far as you can as you move forward. Place your hands on either side of your calves. Inhale halfway up. Shoulders back and down. And then exhale as you grab on to the soles of your feet. Chin to shin. And then just curl in. In Dandasana, Dandasana is a, <clears throat> is a forward fold, so this calms us down, especially before we sleep at night. Breathing in and out. And in Yin Yoga, which is very healing, one of the things that we try to do is to hold an asana, a position, for three minutes at least to be able to open the fascia. 
Again, you can be here. You can also take a block or a bolster. Place that block in between your calves on the highest, second, or third levels. You can also take your bolster and place it on your thighs as you fold forward. Again, allowing us to relax. Inhale as you walk those hands back again. I have to think about time. Exhale first. <coughs> Excuse me. Inhale both arms all the way up. If you're in your chair, you can do this as well. Exhale. As you open up to the right, east and west, drag your shoulders back and down. Your thumb is up. And again, we're in twisted Dandasana, maybe taking that left elbow, placing it on the outside of your right knee. Keep dragging your shoulders back and down. Maybe make mudras with both sets of fingers. Grab on to any of your four fingers and hold on. Breathing in and out. Opening up your right obliques as you do. And as you open those obliques, you're releasing toxins that are stored in our obliques. Inhale back to center and exhale as you open up to the left. Again, thumbs are up and then possibly drag that right elbow on the outside of your left knee. Make mudras with both sets of fingers. Again, this is twisted Dandasana. It's always possible to also place that elbow in between your knees or on the outside of your right knee if, you, if it's too intense. But what we're trying to do is to drag those shoulders back and down, opening up our hearts to the side wall through the breath. Good job. Keep your feet flexed. Inhale back to center. Good job. And then exhale those arms down beside you. Come up to the top of the mat in Sukhasana, simple seated pose, crisscross applesauce. And from here, we're going to express gratitude, inhaling our arms all the way up above us. Hands come together in the Utita and exhale down to Anjali Mudra, releasing anything that you no longer need. Again, inhale all the way up. And then exhale down to Anjali Mudra. Prayer pose, release whatever does not serve you. Inhale all the way up once again. Hands come together. And exhale down to Anjali Mudra. Good job. And then from here, for those of you who are on your chair, you can do this as well. <clears throat> Place your fingertips on either side of your thighs. Inhale that right arm up. Exhale as you bend your elbow, finding that area between your two shoulder blades. Inhale that left arm up. Grab that right elbow and exhale over to the left. Look up towards the right. Again, opening up those right obliques, that right shoulder as well, and smile. It's Monday. Inhale both arms all the way up. And 
and exhale, down with chow. Keep rolling those shoulders back and down. It's very important. Heads are directly above our root chakra. <clears throat> Inhale, that left arm up. Exhale as you bend your elbow, placing the palm of your hand in between your shoulder blades once again. Inhale, that right arm up. Grab onto your left elbow and drag your left elbow over to the right. Again, opening up that left shoulder, opening up those left obliques as well. Breathing in and out. Good job. Inhale, both arms all the way up. Good job. And exhale, down. Roll those shoulders back and down. And then for those of you who are in a chair, you can do this as well. We're going to hold on to our knees. We're going to gently close our eyes. And then we're going to start rotating in a clockwise direction around our navel. These are Kundalini circles. As we move forward, exhale. As we move backward, inhale. And again, making bigger and bigger circles as you move outward. But don't go back too far. Imagine yourselves as though you were satellite dishes. Opening up to the front, <clears throat> to your third eye. And again, imagine that white light rising from your root chakra, crimson, beautiful red, to your sacral chakra, burnt orange, to your solar plexus, lemon yellow your heart chakra, emerald green, to your throat chakra, turquoise, to your third eye, which is indigo, all the way up, to your crown chakra, almost touching your chins or your noses to the mats in front of you and your crown chakra is ultraviolet shooting white light out throughout the world to everyone who needs it and again start coming back towards center we're moving our spines in six different directions opening them up as much as possible opposite direction now. So we're going to slowly rotate in a counterclockwise direction around that root chakra once again. And again, keep remembering not to go too far back. Keep your necks safe. Opening up those spines. And imagining that white light rising through every chakra and then shooting white light out to heal as many people around you as possible that beautiful white light to help others and again you should feel as though you could almost touch your chin 
or your nose to the mat in front of you. Slowly coming back towards center. And keep smiling as you do this. Keep breathing. Your breath is your power. As you breathe out, it's almost as though you're breathing through a straw. As you breathe in, breathe in through your noses. Slowly coming back to center. And then gently stop. Open your eyes. And then from here, we're going to, I believe, so many other things I'd love to do with you. Make sure that you've moved your neck, getting any cricks out of your neck that you may have, maybe rocking it gently from side to side, drawing your chin. Place your fingertips on the mat. Inhale that right arm up and over. Find your left ear. Exhale as you drag your head over to the right, opening up that whole left side of your neck. And smile. Inhale that right arm up. And exhale down. Inhale, your left arm up, wrap your head, find that left, right ear, excuse me, your left arm, left, right ear, and then exhale as you drag your head over to the left. Again, opening up that right side of your neck, breathing in and out. Good job. Inhale, both arms all the way up. And exhale, down. Good job. We're going to get ready to do a guided meditation. It's not going to be very long, but before we do that, let's place the backs of our hands on our knees. Again, making mudras with our fingers. And I want you to gaze out about four feet from you on the mat. Gently close your eyes. Look inward towards that third eye. Again, dragging your shoulders back and down, aligning the crown chakra with your root chakra, and breathing. Again, this is the start of a meditation. happening right now that may be going on in your home or in the room with you. As you breathe in, think, breathe in. As you breathe out, think, breathe out. Draw those hands to Anjali Mudra because we're moving up towards the computer. And from here, I love this. I love to be able to say Namaste to people because it's such a beautiful saying. echoes exactly the same thing that you have in you. And all of us have enormous gratitude. We have our incredible kids who are all a part of our existence now. 
that he will never leave us. The light that shines within me recognizes and echoes that same light that burns within you. Thank you so much for coming to practice yoga with me on this beautiful Monday. Namaste. Thank you. It's not over though. We're going to move towards the computer if this is okay. We're going to do it sitting up. Our spines are going to be straight. And again, if this is something that you would like to be able to do um, with your screen off, that's also possible. But we have just enough time to do so. I need to <clears throat> make sure that you're comfortable in the seated position, make sure that your spine is straight. Let me see if I can see you guys, yes. And um, again, leave your uh, screens off if you'd like to, and I see that most people already have. I'm going to change the playlist to our Yoga Nidra playlist, which um, is actually very beautiful. And this won't take long, but again, I thought that it was very important to end with a meditation to connect with our children in spirit. Gently close your eyes. Next, notice where you place your hands. And again, you can support them by placing the palms down gently on your knees. Now breathe naturally as we begin the meditation. Imagine your child sitting opposite you and that a white light connects you heart to heart. Connect in the love that you share. Allow this feeling to fill your entire body. Next, slowly focus on the phrase, may I be happy, healthy, and whole. Feeling the warmth of this love filling your body. Breathing naturally as the light connects you heart to heart. May I be happy, healthy, and whole. Feel yourselves bathed in the warm and light of your child's love while repeating these phrases silently. May I be happy, healthy, and whole. Remember to breathe naturally as the white light connects you both heart to heart and continue. May I be happy, healthy, and whole. Next, imagine the white light between you becoming a circle of light around both of you. The light is bathing you in the warmth of the love that you radiate out 
to your surroundings and out into the universe. See yourself and your child radiating this love into infinity. May we all be happy, healthy, and whole. May all beings be happy, healthy, and whole. As you continue to experience the warmth of your child's love, turn your attention to your own body and notice your feelings and sensations. Again, no judgment, just notice and let it go. Recognize that your child is with you always, filling you with love and leading you toward healing. May we be happy, healthy, and whole. Breathe naturally and gently open your eyes. Again, one more time, may we all be happy, healthy, and whole. Namaste. Thank you for doing that with me. And I'm really appreciative of all of you for being here this evening. I don't know if anyone had any other questions, but I really would like to just take a little bit of time to tell everyone how good it makes me feel when we gather by Zoom or in a meeting because I feel all of these kids. My ears are ringing right now. It's so funny because when I'm in yoga, when I'm teaching, it doesn't usually happen that way. But when my ears are ringing, I know the kids are here and I know that they're all here for you. And it's such a wonderful thing because I feel so uplifted to know that they are wanting you all to heal just as badly as you want to heal and that they want to communicate and connect with you just as much as we want to connect with our children in spirit. So um, again, if you have any questions, let me know. And thank you so much for being here this evening. And thank you uh, to the team of Helping Parents Heal Spiritual Tools it's really nice to have you here as well. Elizabeth, that was absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing this time and your knowledge, your story, your love and joy with all of us. We just so appreciate everything you do and uh, your beautiful spirit and your beautiful kids. And I love that image of, of you as the marionette, listening to all of our kids and, and um doing all that you do. So take care of yourself too. And I know we appreciate you so much. So did anybody have any questions? Um, you can put your virtual hand up or, or wave. I know it's, we're not, it's always hard to find any anything to say after a meditation. Yeah, yeah we're all. It, it, yeah, I was just gonna say it was so beautiful, Elizabeth, and it made me realize how much I need to do yoga now. I mean, right away, that was incredible and okay. so peaceful and special. So thank you so much. Yeah.
again, yes, knowing your story, but to hear it again from you was really powerful. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you. I, I really love to share about about Morgan and Chelsea, in spite of the fact that it's a, it's a very, very difficult story. It's something that's made such a huge difference in my life, and it's brought so much collateral beauty to my life. So all of you, I would never know all of you if that hadn't happened. So, and I truly believe that they are with me every single step of the way. So just as all of our kids are. And thank you again. And um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. We have uh, Pauline at, um, I believe it's three o'clock Eastern time. And then we also have Kathy um, Behrens, who's going to be at eight o'clock. And James Van Prague is going to be joining us on Thursday, which is gonna be so much fun. He's such a wonderful person as well as all of the other meetings that we have, our dad's meetings and everything else that's going to go on this week. And you're welcome to join me on Thursday morning. I'll be doing a much um, longer yin um, practice. So you're welcome to come. But that Elizabeth, is... The, I'm sorry. sorry. There is a question about how often do you do your yoga classes? So um, do you want to just share a little... I, I teach yoga five times a week. Um, used to be I taught a lot more than that, but I teach five times a week. And one of them is um, available for all of the parents of Helping Parents Heal on Thursdays. And that's yin, but I teach uh, flow yoga. I teach uh, yoga nidra. And I also teach, um, uh, let's see, power yoga on Fridays with a little bit more intensity and it's always a lot of fun. And they're all on Zoom. Yes, they are. All of the meetings are. And, and would they so, just Google? I mean, do you have a, a website for? I have Elizabeth Boisson Yoga, which is just a Facebook uh, group. Okay. And then the links to be able to get on are on there. Um, as I say, I do the one on Thursdays for free of charge. And then otherwise, um, the whole month for all 20 classes is $15 that I um, ask for if you join the Elizabeth Boisson Yoga group. So um, so anyway, if, if you want to do that, I would love to have you in my class. And um, again, thank you so much for having me on and have a wonderful evening. If everybody wants to unmute and say good, good night, goodbye. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, and thank you all for joining us. Yes, thank you so much. The class. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you so much. So much. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a wonderful evening. Take care. Thank you. Thank bye you. bye. Thank you.